Well, as the guy from behind me might tell you, big upsets can happen, okay? And we witnessed the biggest political upset of our time just this past Tuesday when Donald Trump stunned Hillary Clinton in the Electoral College, becoming our nation's 45th president, which he'll be inaugurated January 20th of next year. Well, today in the world of college football, only coincidental that just four days after a Trump stunning win, we see another huge upset, this time in college football, and this time involving a team that went to the college football playoff just a year ago and had a lot of players returning on the offensive side of the ball, including a terrific quarterback. Losing at home in a conference game in improbable fashion. But thankfully, it wasn't the Oklahoma Sooners. It was Clemson. That's what we're getting on a little bit uh, later on this Saturday. Even though I said it would be an early Saturday evening broadcast, I wanted to watch Auburn, Georgia, and I also wanted to watch uh, Clemson and uh, Pittsburgh first. Do a little, you know, channel surfing, a little eavesdropping before I'd come on with my post game and see what would happen. Maybe see an upset. And by the way, Auburn, a double digit favorite, and team I really praised on my uh, Let's Talk College Football show from just previously, and I really ragged Georgia. Well, Georgia, oh, you an apology. You played gutty today, especially defensively shutting Auburn down and getting a win. So that's a upset there. But no upset today in Norman as the Sooners, just like they did against Kansas State a few weeks ago at home for an early morning kickoff. And early morning kickoffs are not the easiest thing to get up for, but the Sooners, just like against K-State a few weeks ago at home, take care of business early with a solid start a nice start, you know, up 21, uh, I believe 21 nothing early on, and, you know, really making the early moments of that game count and going on to a 45-24 to win. Second straight win, by the way, over Baylor, and OU's seventh consecutive win overall after the bad September in which they went 1-2. and two. Now, you know, they are 8-2 um, and two on the season, and again, winners of seven consecutive and 14 straight Conference wins for the defending Big 12 champs, who are still the only unbeaten team in Big 12 play this season. 7-0. and Of course, we'll talk more about uh, their next opponent, West Virginia, later on. But the one thing about this game, if you noticed, um, it brings back that old slogan, that old expression uh, that's just as true today as it was the day that it was engraved in our brains. Okay, Quality is better than quantity. I'll say it again. Quality is better than quantity. Baylor had enough first downs, okay, to put forth the winning effort. They had more, more first downs than Oklahoma. They had a ton of yardage as well. And they were able to run successfully against OU despite the fact that there was no shot to Limwood today. And despite the fact that Terrence Williams, um, you know, the guy that's the starter now, uh, despite the fact that he got hurt early on, okay? I mean, you see him play in the first quarter, and then, you know, time left to go in the first quarter, all of a sudden, you know, he's not available, okay? He gets hurt as well. So the injuries just continue to mount up. We'll get more about the uh, injury situation with Baylor in just a moment. But despite the fact that Baylor had enough yardage, despite the fact that first downs Oklahoma, again, you know, you favor them for two reasons in this game for the victory. More quality, took advantage of the opportunities, and also, too, just like they did against Iowa State a week ago, time of possession, okay? About a 36-minute to 24-minute advantage for the Sooners. You can do that. Yeah, you know, you have to feel real good about your chances. And for, for Baker Mayfield, a guy that I absolutely gave a hard time to in September, because let's face it, Baker Mayfield in September looked a little shaky, and the scary thing was that he wasn't taking what the defense was giving him, all right? Sometimes... Instead of running for the first down, he would try to throw on the run, cross by, and it didn't work. Sometimes he'd try to make too much out of a play instead of rather, I wouldn't say, just giving up on the play. But, you know, you know basically playing the conservative way out, he wouldn't do that. He got too gambly, and you saw that it didn't always pay off for the Sooners. And you got to remember, those mistakes were affecting the offense. But since the 1-2 and two start for Oklahoma in September, Baker Mayfield has looked like that quarterback that we saw last year taking what the defense gives him, and by the way, doing it with his feet as well as with his arm and incorporating as many receivers as possible in order to sustain drives. And today they had a couple of third and long plays early on, but were able to convert. So Baker Mayfield, the concentration is definitely better, 
and you can see that it really rubs off on the team. And as far as a ground game for the Sooners, uh, nice job today by Joe Mixon with a little over 100 yards. So the, the first half, you know, the running game, well, we, we've seen it better for the Sooners, but as it wore along, as the game wore along, um, it became more productive. Again, you know, Mixon, nice touchdown run at the end, about 45 yards and had over 100 for the game. P. Ryan was using this game, not used as often as Mixon, but again, remember P. Ryan was out for about a month uh, with the leg injury, so no sense in rushing him back completely, and I promise you he'll be more of a factor in the West Virginia game in Morgantown um, a week from today. D.D. Westbrook, Blitnikoff Award winner. Uh, you might as well give him the trophy right now as the nation's best receiver. Remember at the beginning of the season, you know, before the season even started, um, we're wondering, okay, who's going to be the number one receiver for Oklahoma and hopefully do what – you know, Sterling Shepard was doing throughout his career, that is being the number one target and being that big playmaker. In September, you know, Didi was not 100%, so even though he was productive, he wasn't at his full potential. Well, he's been at his full potential since early October to the tune of 14 touchdowns, including a pair of TDs today. And you, you could just tell that, you know, not to say that Sterling Shepard wasn't valuable, not to say that you don't miss Sterling Shepard, but maybe you don't miss him as much because of the fact that you have D.D. Westbrook, who right now looks like the number one receiver um, in the Big 12 and possibly in all of college football. <coughs> Excuse me. Mark Andrews, again, was a factor early and often in this game. And again, the distribution of passing. And Baker Mayfield was just outstanding, all right? Get back to Mayfield for a second. 80% of his passes he completed, 20 of 25 Two TD throws and also ran for a TD early on that gave Oklahoma the initial lead. Again, you can tell the play of Baker Mayfield as a guy that is more and more confident in getting back to that Baker Mayfield that really, you know, took Oklahoma campus by storm and he put the campus on his back, put the state on his back, and he says, you know what, let's get ready for the ride. And it's been another fun ride in Big 12 play for Baker Mayfield. A solid comeback for him after a rough September. Give credit to the offensive line, again, for paving the way for the ground game. And, you know, there, there were some instances where, where Mayfield was getting pressured, even had to, you know, occasionally take a sack. But, again, the offensive line was ready to play against Baylor's defense. Speaking of defense, got to talk about the Oklahoma defense. And it wasn't always pretty for them. But here's where quality is better than quantity comes into play. Seth Russell did not have a good game at all. It was a bad day for him, and this was prior to the injury which was one of the more gruesome injuries I've seen in a while. We'll talk about that later. Seth Russell today, though, even before the injury, it was a game for him to forget. He had, uh, I think, 16 incompletions, 15 completions only. And he'll remember the name, um, you know, Jordan Evans for quite a while because Evans had a pair of picks. But remember, early on in the game when Baylor's down 7 nothing on their initial drive, it's fourth and I think two from around midfield. This shows you that Baylor had no confidence in their defense at all. And you don't help them when you go for it that early in the game. I couldn't understand that at all. And instead, it doesn't work out. In fact, it was the Jordans, you know. It was Jordan Evans, you know, making a stop and also getting some help, you know, up front uh, from another Jordan, Jordan Wade. And they tagged him to make a big stop on fourth down. If Baylor punts, possibly they got the Sooners pinned inside their own 10-yard line. And, you know, remember the following series after the Sooners made that fourth and two stop, Oklahoma went three and out, but punted, and Austin Seibert had that punt at the Baylor two-yard line, making Baylor go 98 yards. In that same situation, if Baylor punts, Oklahoma goes three and out, Oklahoma's going to have to punt back to Baylor, and Baylor's going to get the ball at around midfield. Instead, oh, you basically force the Baylor punt at the two, Baylor goes three and out, and the Sooners have half a field to work with and would score on the following possession. you got to use your brain in that situation. In other words, understanding going forward that early in the game, even though I know Baylor's defense isn't that good, you do them no favors when you don't make it on fourth down and when Oklahoma is selling out for the run, and then you make your Baylor defense, who already gave up a touchdown in the opening series, go out for the second possession and putting them in that predicament in good field position for the Sooners. So that decision on fourth and short to go for that early for Baylor um, was puzzling, to say the very least. But uh, today, Jordan Evans, a pair of picks. By the way, becoming the first OU player ever with two sacks and two interceptions. So big time 
uh, game for him. And Lamont Thomas, I thought, was a bit pivotal as well with a couple of uh, pass breakups. So, you know, did, did Baylor pick up quality yardage? Absolutely. But did Oklahoma come up with big plays on defense? Of course, with the interceptions, forcing a, a fumble on Seth Russell, accounting for three turnovers. And then, of course, the unfortunate injury. You just hope that uh, Seth Russell's okay. He had to leave the game, and that made way uh, for Zach Smith, a true freshman, to come into the game at quarterback. You know, Zach Smith might be a nice player down the road, but you're putting him in a bad situation with his team already behind and on the road, and you're making a freshman go in there, and you're trying to pick up from where Russell uh, left off. And um, maybe you can get some a spark, but in that case, it wasn't going to uh, be the case. In fact, Baylor had, you know, adversity before this game because of the shock Linwood suspension. You know, his attitude right now is not in the right place. And then um, Terrence Williams, we mentioned the starting running back for Baylor. He gets hurt in the game. So, you know, for, for Baylor, they were already playing basically uh, two or three cards short of a full deck of 52, and they end up crapping out in the end, as they would say, in Las Vegas. So for Baylor, um, they're already at bowl eligibility, but from what I keep hearing as Baylor now loses three in a row, uh, they may not even want to go to a bowl game this year. That would be stupid. I mean, you need the extra practices, but also, too, you'd be forking over the money that you get to go to a bowl game. And also, for the sake of the Big 12, because the Big 12 teams get money for any Big 12 team that goes to a bowl game. So they'd really be cheating themselves and cheating the conference if they decide not to go to a bowl game in spite of all the things I know that's gone on off the field, sexual assault charges, but also, too, with them rallying to try to get – you know, Art Browse back, and they're, this is a team that's still living in the past, and it's a team that right now their future looks bleak with only two players in their upcoming recruiting class, and that's pretty scary, and I expect a decline for Baylor next year in the standings, and I expect them to continue to plummet probably two years from now, be right there with Kansas and Iowa State as bottom feeders of the Big 12. Things for Baylor could really end up going from right now bad to extremely bad. I mean, right now, uh, their record, I think, of 6-3 and three, uh, might look like a dream season compared to what they're going to see down the road. And for the Sooners, they keep the ball rolling. They keep the fire burning, as Ario Speedwagon once said. Game on next Saturday, Morgantown, West Virginia. It's going to be a darn good game with the Mountaineers. West Virginia holds off Texas in the end for an important road win. Mountaineers have only lost one conference game, so if they beat the Sooners, there is a, a tie right there for the Big 12 championship that should become very, very pivotal in the tie-breaking standings, even though I know Oklahoma State is right in the thick of things as uh, well. So, give all the credit in the world to the Sooners you know, after the you know after the September the the rocky game against Houston and the ass whipping that they had to absorb courtesy of the Buckeyes. They picked themselves up from the campus and they've now, like I said earlier, won seven in a row, eight and two, and today. A, a nice win for the Crimson and Cream, 45-24. to 24. Baker was sensational, and it was Jordan Rules as Jordan um, Evans with one heck of a game. Two interceptions and two sacks and making history, school history, in the process. Don't know the time yet of Oklahoma, West Virginia. That will be announced sometime on a Sunday the 13th. Won't be easy for the Sooners because that's going to be a good defense that they'll face in the Mountaineers, an offense that still is not put completely together in West Virginia, but they still have the capability to make things happen. Sooners will need to be on their A game to remain perfect in Big 12 play. Boomer Sooner.